The guardian standing in the shadow shook his head as the female sauntered toward one of the passageways and disappeared into the blackness. Strong, sensual, and cunning, all traits his cat admired, and yet she was almost too confident to be one of the hunt's usual runners, too different from the other females he'd watched run over the years. Who are you? he asked under his breath. For the first time in decades, he felt an intense interest in the outcome of the hunt. If he had possessed even the slightest desire to take a mate, the tempting feminine morsel that the temple had swallowed up would have been high on his list of candidates. He wanted to chase the honey and apple scent of her up the line of those surprisingly long legs, bury himself in the creamy gold-colored skin that had his cat demanding to lick her from head to toe. Concentrating, of course, on all the creamy pink bits. He suspected that she'd have a good many of those, and that she would protest vociferously if he so much as laid a paw on her. Persuading her to explore a little passion with him would have been intensely pleasurable. Unfortunately, she'd picked a passageway that was likely to drop her square in the middle of the guardian's personal chambers. Most of the passageways led through that particular area. It made the hunt simpler if the guardians didn't have to spend hours combing the miles of dark, dusty passageways for lost females. One of his brothers would choose her and chase her. The next time he saw her, she'd be wearing another male's bells. He knew, too, bone deep, that she was no match for either guardian or ifrit, and yet she'd be throwing herself into the path of both in his temple. He didn't like the idea of her getting hurt, but that was wrong. He tested the thought warily, if she broke the rules of the temple, she wouldn't get any more than what she had coming to her. That shouldn't have bothered him, but it did. He bit back the feral growl that threatened to erupt from his throat. He didn't want a mate. He shouldn't care who had her or who hurt her. But he did on a completely primal level. His little interloper smelled like no female that had come from the valley. She had an exotic wild scent and a purpose clearly at odds with that of the other mate-hungry women around her. He wanted to know what that purpose was. He wanted her. "'She's no bride,' he said to the man lounging on the divan. "'She's up to something.' His hard gaze was trained on the shadowy passageway where the female had disappeared. He swore he could still smell her scent. "'Perhaps.' Amunra's air of sensual insouciance fell away as he smoothly rose from the divan. Quite probably, and that is why I summoned you here.